Everything I'm going to tell you is based upon a journal article that I wrote that was concurrently published as a book chapter in the Handbook of the Evolution of Human Sexuality. It's about three years ago that those publications were done. And I've added findings from research done at Knox College in uh, Galesburg, Illinois. There is only one animal model for food choice or mate choice, and that is through the sense of smell. Pheromones are species-specific chemicals that influence a definite behavior or a developmental process. They do this by affecting hormone levels. There are sex differences in pheromones, and there aren't sex differences, of course, in food odors. So that's how you get to sex differences in behavior. Sex differences in hormones cause sex differences in the hormone response that is associated with sexual behavior during our development of sexual preferences. So you can see the corollary uh, with food odors affecting hormones, affecting our choice of foods and what we eat, and developing food preferences. So if you can follow one track that leads to sex differences and compare it with the other track where there's no sex differences, you can probably better relate to how we get to sex differences in behavior. It's sex differences in the stimulus, sex differences in the response, and the response is then associated with behavior. No other animal thinks about its response to food odors or to pheromones. The response is conditioned to occur by repeat exposure during which the odors or pheromones affect levels of hormone, hormones that drive the development of associated behaviors. Now most of you are familiar with Pavlovian conditioning. From the day we're born, we start being conditioned to respond to pheromones. Just like with food choice. Throughout life you have associations with what you eat and you have associations with the people that you come in contact with. The things that you don't think about are the people that you come in contact with and how their odor is affecting your hormones. Pheromones are the biologically relevant stimulus. Everything else is secondary because it is conditioned. Pheromones are produced by the metabolism of sex hormones. That's where you get the sex difference in the pheromones. Testosterone is associated with more odor because it's associated with more glands developing, and that's why men produce a stronger odor. Also, there's bacteria associated with the metabolism of these hormones once they're secreted through these glands onto the skin. And men and women have very different types of bacteria in different parts of their body, and so you get a different metabolism of these um, precursors to the pheromones in men and women, depending on what part of the body they're coming from. These are the parts of the body that they come from. You've got mouth odor due to pheromone, chest odor, breast odor, underarm odor, pubic odors, vaginal odors. Basically, you've got a lot of odors from any hairy area, any, any hair that you can see called terminal hair is associated also with pheromone production and distribution. The most telling factor about how pheromones are involved in conditioning your behavioral response as you develop your preferences for other people is courtship sequence. <laughs> this is very human specific, so when we talk about species specificity in courtship behaviors, you have to wonder, why are all these courtship behaviors associated with pheromones? You know, it's just like any other animal. Their courtship behavior is associated with pheromones. Anyway, first base, pheromones are present in the underarms. So, when a boy places his arm around a girl, she's getting some pheromone exposure there. And then the next thing they do, more than likely, if that goes well, they're going to kiss, and they get some more pheromone exposure, a mutual exchange. From there, what they want to go on to is second base, pheromones present on the chest, like I told you, and secreted from the breasts of women. That's what the guy wants to do next, right? They're kind of cuddling, hugging, and kissing. He wants to expose her breasts, because that's where more pheromone production is. If she's laying on his chest, she gets more exposure to his pheromones. So things are gradually progressing through the courtship sequence. And then, so in preparation for intercourse, they're going to get naked, and they've got even more pheromone exposure. Things are still going well, they've hit third base, and finally the home run is with sexual intercourse, pheromone exposure nears its maximum. What I'm saying is it's a conditioned response. What we see 
and what we like with breasts or whatever the differences in physical features that we like are conditioned by the associated odors. Maximum exposure to pheromones occurs with oral genital sex. The most intimate and the most animalistic of human sexual behaviors. So when people say, oh no, humans are primarily visual creatures, I say, what are you looking for down there? <laughs>